name is Hope Law. I was diagnosed in last year in October and I was stage two. Wow. Um, and kind of tell us, tell everybody what symptoms you had um, leading up to the diagnosis and how many doctors did you have to see in order to get that diagnosis? Okay, so I symptoms that I had were, um, well, first I just didn't feel like myself. Um, all of last year leading up into my diagnosis, I just felt different. I just, I had um, unexplained high blood pressure uh, that came out of nowhere and by high it was close to like the 200 over one something. Yeah, it was really high um, and it, it would come in spurts um, and then it would go back down to sort of normal. But prior to that, I've always had really normal blood pressure. So that was one thing. Um, I had joint pain really bad. I had knee pain, swelling. Um, my face was swollen, um, eyelids, hands, feet, fluid retention, bruising. Um, so those were all of my uh, side of or symptoms leading up to my diagnosis. Um, and I probably saw, I saw my, my family practitioner probably 20 times last year. <laughs> um, they kept sending me away, telling me that everything was fine. Um, I saw an endocrinologist, oddly enough, because I asked my, my normal doc, my regular doctor to uh, check me for thyroid. So I, I had seen an endocrinologist. Um, and then I, uh, I saw a rheumatologist um, because they thought I had lupus and then I ended up in the ER and you know that's how they went so then they found it. Um, just a quick question so the endocrinologist didn't think to test your adrenal functions? So yeah he did actually oddly enough he did um, he looked at my thyroid my my thyroid levels were off um, after I asked my doctor to test my thyroid, they were off and I was like, ah, found it, got it, figured it out. Yeah. And I went to the endocrinologist um, at University of Maryland here. I, I'm from Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, and they tested it again and it was normal. So then he said, my symptoms sounded adrenal in nature. Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so he said, I want you to go get your metanephrines tested. Okay. Um, and I never got them tested because the next, I think maybe three days later, my ANA was off. So they said, we don't think it's endo uh, endocrine related. We think that you have an autoimmune disease, which would explain more so my symptoms with like the swelling, sure. the joint pain, which was excruciating, like yeah. so bad that I couldn't get out of bed some days. Like I really like struggled to even want to walk down the steps. So they shifted focus on it. So he had actually ordered that test. Um, even though mine is non-producing, my tumor is non-producing. So it wouldn't have shown anything anyway. Um, yeah. So, but he actually ordered that test and said, your symptoms sound adrenal in nature, but we shifted focus and we thought it was, um, an autoimmune disease, they thought it was lupus, which actually ended up saving my life, hopefully. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, a tricky case. That sounds like a- Very, yeah. It was It was a lot of different things happening at one time. Right, but you sure. knew something was wrong. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh. Um, so why do you think it's important to see an expert with adrenal cancer? Um, I think it's important, and again, I'm very new to this, um, but I do believe that it's important to see an expert because it's so rare. Um, and, you know, there's not a ton of research that's been done. You know, we're, it's not one of those cancers where everybody's researching and there's a lot of funding. Um, so I, I know from my own, you know, just doing my own little research that, you know, going to the experts and the, they've seen the patients, you know, they know how to treat this. It's just not like some of the other cancers. Um, and just for me personally, like when I, I flew all over to see different doctors mm -hmm. um, and I felt more confident that I had a fighting chance after knowing that like they've treated patients with this cancer. 
and that they could tell me like, you know, we have patients that have lived this long or, you know, I just felt like they were able to tell me like statistics that I couldn't find on Google sort of, you know, this, you know, if you, you know, you, this is the percentage of chance that it'll come back. You know, if you make it to four years, the percentage goes down to this kind of thing. Whereas if you go to a normal oncologist, I don't think that they have that knowledge just based on the lack of patients that they've treated. Right. And then tell it, you said you flew around. Tell me who you've seen and and, and what, since you've been diagnosed, um, what, what were the steps after that and what where are you now? Yep. So I um, flew to Michigan to see Dr. Hammer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I flew to New York to see Dr. Foho. Um, I had an appointment with Dr. Cabra at MD Anderson, but I was unable to, to go just because of how they scheduled it with my kids. I couldn't couldn't attend that um, appointment. But I really felt like for me, Dr. Foho was the right decision. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I met him and, you know, my family was in all. And then I obviously saw my oncologist at Johns Hopkins, who's still my local, you know, doctor. Um, and then I met with Dr. Del Rivera, which, you know, I love her. And mm -hmm. then, um, so she'll, I'll be, uh, she'll be my doctor as well. Um, so those are the places that I went to. Um, and can I, I ask, how did you, I mean, you nailed it. Like you went boom, boom, boom all around. Like, how did you know to see these doctors? So this is actually before I found the group. Like I, my first, like I'm a, I'm like a real problem solver type of person. And I go into like crazy mode, like when crisis happens. So I yeah. literally didn't sleep and everyone's like, get off the internet. You know, it's the worst thing you can do. And I'm like, I have to find the best person. Like, I don't care where I have to travel to. Like, I've got to live. I'm going to live. So I got to find whoever can, like, who has the knowledge to keep me alive as long as right. I can be here. So I started um, Googling. And of course, the first thing that comes up is Carling in Tampa. And I was like, mom, we're moving to Tampa. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so we were like, I had an appointment scheduled there. And then um, I actually had brain surgery at Johns Hopkins when I was a child and they saved my life there. So um, I ended up having my surgery there. But then I knew after that I would have to have treatment elsewhere. So I was trying to find the best um, or the most, you know, experienced people so I just started Googling and looking and, you know, and then I found, um, I found Dr. Del Rivero because my cousin works at NIH and uh -huh. my dad contacted her to find out if there was any specialist. So that's how we found her. And then Dr. Foho and Dr. Hammer, I found from like just scouring the internet and not sleeping for like a month straight, <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out how to live. I mean, it sounds like you found the best of the best. So <laughs> definitely it paid off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, good. Sure. And um, so you had surgery. Yes. In November, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're just, you're having scans and on mitotain. Yes. I How am. are you dealing with mitotain? So I am actually dealing very well with mitotain. Um, I was scared to death to take it. And, you know, I thought it was going to be this horrific nightmare of a drug for me. But I'm so blessed that that's not the case. Um, I don't have any symptoms anymore. Um, when I was titrating up, like I'm now at where the dose that Dr. Foho and Dr. Del Rivero think is good for now for me. Um, but as I was titrating up, I would have, um, well, at first I thought I was having mitotane brain. But <laughs> I figured that, I figured out that it wasn't the mitotain, it was actually, I was taking Zoloft also for depression, just because this is a lot. Of course. And something about the two together was giving yes. me horrific brain fog. Yeah. Um, like when I've had my first visit with Dr. Del Rivero virtually, I could like, I was having such bad brain fog, but I had just like upped the Zoloft. So then I figured, I was like, well, I wasn't having it before. Maybe I should talk to my doctor. I stopped the Zoloft, that went away. Right. And then I was having really bad diarrhea. Um, every time I would increase it, uh, titrate up, it would, uh -huh. you know, the diarrhea would come. And then I was like ODing on Imodium. 
And <laughs> then I realized one night I forgot to take it and it didn't happen. So I was like, maybe it's gone. So I was like, yeah. let me try another couple nights without it. And it's, it's no longer there. So, um, and other than that, I it literally, I don't feel like I'm taking any medication, which scares me because I'm like praying to God, like, please let my levels be going where they need to go. Right. I don't feel anything. So right. I'm lucky and I'm really blessed, but I'm also nervous because I'm like, I have my next mitre tain check soon. So, well, and just, you know, keep that in your head, but I think that's encouraging for other people to hear. Um, because yeah. of course you hear the worst of the worst, right. And not everyone, um, you know, can tolerate it well. So when we find those little gems that do, people need to hear that. So yeah, absolutely. Um, Dr. Foho said, please, <laughs> if you have a good experience, go out and tell your story. He's like, yes. because people need to hear it. He's like, it's not, it is, it is a hard drug for a lot of people, but yes. there are some that don't have bad side effects. And he's like, so, you know, if you have a good experience, tell it like, you know, he's like, because I have patients that do well on it and, you know, but we hear a lot of the bad. And so that's why it's so scary. You know, right. I mean, I literally, I think it took me like two and a half weeks to start or something. I was so scared. I would go to take it every night and I'm like, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. Like, I can't do this tonight. Yeah. And I started and I'm like, I don't feel anything. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's great advice. That's great advice. I did the same thing. I would stare at the pills. I'm like, <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> and then they come in this super scary looking bag from, i know from the pharmacy with the yellow x right. i'm like oh my gosh it's, it's like hazardous i'm like oh i don't want to take that i don't want to put that in my body right right i'm, right. Blessed. I'm really blessed that right you know. and again not for everyone not everybody has those but but we, we i'm so glad that we can tell the story of the people that do so i'm so happy to to have you here um ah uh, so this could be maybe not the most appropriate question because it's been just a few months, but I do see that you've scoured, you, you Google, you, I feel like you already have become the expert. Um, I think you just need to move through time in order to process. But I, I do think that I'm just going to go ahead and ask. So what do you wish you knew then that you know now? Um, before I was diagnosed, the whole lead up process, where you are at this point, as opposed to last year? Um, well, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, so I wish that I, before I was diagnosed, I wish that I would have like, understood that life's not promised for one. Um, and like we don't all we're not all guaranteed forever um and um i mean i don't know from a medical standpoint what i could have done more you know but i just you know i think a, mo i read something online that said it was like a post or something and it was basically saying like we're, we all live as though like we're guaranteed 90 years like the government owes us 90 years or something it's a birthright <laughs> and right. we're not. so for me that's just I, I wish that i would have like taken every moment and in, in, in time it you know slower because <laughs> i missed the old life that i had life before this and it's a new way of life right it is yeah. And I promise, I promise you will get there and you're so early in your diagnosis, but you are going to move through your, this is an early stage of grief and it is lost. You've, you, you're experiencing loss right now. Mm -hmm. So all of this is totally normal and know that we are here for you. We are your cheerleaders. We are your advocates. We will always be here to hold your hand. Um, you need to vent, you need to cry, call us. Um, mm -hmm. And kind of along those lines, tell me about the support group. Has it has it helped you? Um, would you recommend it to other people? Uh, it's not for everyone, you know, and I, I keep saying that it's not for everyone. And sometimes it gets hard. People need to step back, but tell me what your experience is with it. Uh, so yeah, the support group, I don't know how I would even be functioning without it. 
Um, so I'm so grateful for this group. Um, and it really, I'm not just saying, and I, I truly believe like I would be lost without it because, you know, you only get, you know, an hour with a doctor, you know, and then you can call them if you have a question, but like the emotional part or, Hey, did you, you know, even just reading people's stories for me is like, really, it gives me hope. I, you know, and it makes me feel like there's, I have a fighting chance because there's, look at all these people that are still here. And even though I know there's a lot of people who lose their battle to this, I, there's still a lot of people that are winning mm -hmm. and I want to win. So, you know, seeing people that are doing it and especially for me, um, like the moms in the group, it's like really important because like, that's the part that breaks my heart. I tell my parents all the time I'm like it's not I'm not even afraid for myself I'm, I'm scared for my kids <clears throat> and so um that's the part for me like I really look at like the moms that are doing it because it's hard when you have to put your game face on and be a mom and and be strong and you're scared because you don't want to leave them <laughs> so um I 10 out of 10 recommend it <laughs> And like, at first my family was like, get off of that. Because like, I was, uh, I'm, I'm still consumed. Like every morning or in the middle of the night when I wake up, I get on Facebook and I read and I'm looking, did anybody post anything new, right. you know? And, um, but like, at first I was looking for like the stories of people that didn't make it. Cause I wanted to figure out, well, what stage were they and what happened? And so it was like, it was good at first. And then I started diving into like trying to see people like with the, the X mark by their name. And then that started to be a rabbit hole that I didn't need to go down. But overall, like, I mean, and that it's the reality of it, you know, and it's so sad to see like the beautiful people that have passed away, but there's a, so much hope. And I really honestly didn't think I had a chance until I found the group. Cause I'm like, wow, there's people that are living that mm -hmm. are doing this. And so I am like a self-proclaimed captain of this group. Like I <laughs> respond to everyone and I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time, but I'm just like, I want to respond to everybody. And then like, um, you know, if I have an answer to a question, I, I like take pride in answering them now. Of course. I mean, that's, that's the thing with it. And then like you gain that knowledge and you want to give it back so badly. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So so think about what you're doing now with this interview that we'll share to other people, especially to the newly diagnosed patients. Yeah. Um, that it, it's, it's huge. It's going to be invaluable. So um, know that your story will inspire others and, when I interview you again in five years, because we're both going to be here for that. Um, yeah. I mean, we'll do it in person though, with cocktails in our hands. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess kind of with that being said, is there any advice, because you are a captain now, um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what advice would you give to a newly diagnosed patient? Um, I would say, um, one, that, you know, you all, all, you need to go see a specialist. That's the first step to stay off the internet at first <laughs> until you find this group, because everything on Google is going to make you feel like you're it's that's it. Um, and, you know, um, find us your own support, you know, mm -hmm. people that you can lean on because it's really hard. And it's like, you know, in the beginning, I cried for hours every single day literally yeah. would wake up and just cry and but it gets better and there are like i'm still in the grieving phase of my old life and the life that i thought that i was gonna have mm -hmm. um but you know like each phase is hard but you know you get through it like the initial shock phase feels like i don't i can't put that into words yeah. um but it will get better and you'll be able to slowly move into living your life again and you know find the people and the things that give you strength because mm -hmm. they'll you know pick you up when you're you feel like you can't make it through the day because you yeah. will feel like that but it will get better yes yes great advice hope great you are the captain <laughs> <laughs> um so what or who gives you hope so who gives me hope is my three beautiful sons. Um, and they're, I have a 14 year old and I have two twins that are seven. 
and they are my everything, they're my world, and I am going to slay this dragon for them. No matter what it takes, I'm gonna fight really hard for them, but they give me all the hope in the world. I always told tell my sons that I could go through a burning building and come out alive to just to see them on the other side. So when this diagnosis happened, I'm like, wow, I always said that. And now it's time to like put that to the test. Like I gotta do this for them. So right. right. Mama Bear will prevail. <laughs> yeah. Mama Bear is there. Yeah. Um, is there anyone that you, I, in, I, there's a lot of people, but is there anyone in particular, doctors, family, anyone that you want to thank? Oh, we, absolutely. So I want to thank my mom. She's my rock. Um, my stepmom, who literally slept in the bed with me for weeks. And I, I mean, I was like, I went back to baby mode and she was there and she's still there for me and my dad. And, you know, they were my travel buddies. You know, they, they took notes in all of my appointments because I was like really overwhelmed and oh God, in Dr. Hammer's office, I was screaming about something <laughs> and they called okay. me down. So they came with me and like, they traveled and my mom was there and they continue to be like my support. And uh, I, I love them and I really couldn't do this without them. Good, good. Um, anything else that you want to share that you can think of? Um, well, I guess anybody listening to this would already have been diagnosed, but I would have said like, listen to your body because I knew something was wrong and, you know, I was really persistent and that's how they found it. But um, there's really nothing else for this group that I, I whoever's, watching this i'm praying for you that you will stay strong and you'll beat this and that's it well i think um your name says it all you were named hope for a reason and i think you're here to inspire us all um again we will be talking again five years in the future with cocktails in our hands yes <laughs> But hang in there, Mama. I promise this is hard. This is so hard, but you, you've landed in the right place. You've landed with the right doctors um, and you've got it. You've got the drive. You've got the passion and it's not always going to be easy, but um, we're here for you. We are. We are here for you and, and you can get through this. I promise. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So I'm going to turn the recording off. Um, and we'll say goodbye to the camera and then I'll keep talking to you. Okay. All right. Thank you for the interview.